61, 61 year old gentleman, he's diabetic, he's hypertensive, he's uh, smoking, and the first stent was deployed in 2010 in the Proxerc, that is, that you see a trifurcation. Second stent was deployed in 2012, and the third stent in 2013. He did well until recently when he developed symptoms, and I'll show you what he has. Okay, now, yeah. now I'll yeah. show you. This is the, the LV gram is good. Yeah. The RCA has some disease in the proximal, it's not that bad. Yeah. And then we have this trouble maker down here. I have lost a distal cirque before. And here, this is just AP projection yeah. showing the, the trouble. So we'll OCT first. Go ahead and show the OCT. Okay. Please, OCT. And there are three layers of stents there. Yeah. Yeah, I so can see, see that you guys uh, left those bifurcations. They didn't do anything to the side branches, but there's at least two layers of stent there, isn't there? Yeah. In the, yeah. yeah. So there are three stents overlapping in their in this in the distal semi. So you see the you see the right now you see the neointima hyperplasia there. And then uh, we start seeing the double layer you guys yeah. see in there. Yeah. yeah. And then there is an area you have a you have a, a nodule an mm -hmm. ISR with a big nodule of neointima hyperplasia. Just go proximal and and then you see the calcium. So over here is uh, neoatherosclerosis, and that's calcium. See, the, 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 re, the refrigency is very direct. You can see behind. So that's not lipid. If it was lipid, you wouldn't see anything behind. So here is a lot of calcium in this, in this uh, ISR. A, a, a 360 degree calcium there with the double layer, and more proximally, you see neointima, and a little bit more severe neointima hyperplasia. So, so we have trouble with this case. Calcific ISR. We're gonna calcific yeah. ISR is, is what you're showing. Single, calcific ISR, is exactly. One in one single case. And ISR for other question is why not it's a calcific neoatherosclerosis? Correct. Correct. The that's problem, what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. is developed and now it's a very calcified. That's the exactly what it is. is. That as you know, multi-layer, we try to do, our goal will be to do IVBT. These are the cases we don't have drug-coated balloon and we'll hear more from Colombo. Looks like Antonio loves the drug-coated balloon now. Uh, and uh, maybe once it comes, uh, so uh, quite a bit, but here we have only IVBT. So what we are doing now, bar 2.0. It's a 2 bar, 7 French radial. Yeah, 7 French radial. If somebody wants to know that radial, we are putting a 7 French. And it's a 2 burr, right? It's right a large burr. Yeah, 2 bar. Yeah. Yeah. Give little Keep the atropine. I and think uh, yeah. a, a question yeah, that uh, needs to be explored yeah. is uh, uh, will drug coated balloon work on calcific lesions? Should because. Be, uh, huh? You know, it's like putting a cream on a piece of stone. Yeah. I don't think uh, the cream will be absorbed. You still have to do okay. atherotomy and then right, put the gonna, balloon. We're going to restart now. We have a heart rate again. Continue, yeah. And the key here is not to do the, the strut, you know, the, the rotor strut. Yeah. yeah. It'll take us some time. See, this is a problem. Yeah. Don't get it too excited. Yeah. yeah. It will take some time. And see, I keep changing the wire position. Yeah. And I see you don't have a pacemaker here. We on our side? Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah, so key is very simple. Radial, we try to avoid pacemaker. You give aminophilin 300 milligram and atropine 0.6 to 1 milligram. Pulse rate is yeah. good. We patient, we start with a 2 of maybe a little more aggressive. We'll see a few seconds, two more runs, not. We'll downsize to 1.75. I think aminophilin is excellent. We stop using pacemaker. Oh, aminophilin using aminophilin. Infusion. All right. Excellent. <laughs> we stop having perforations of the right ventricle. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But <laughs> what I'm seeing is is um, you have to be patient here because there's calcium. Yeah. It's a lot of disease. Uh, you see some D cell. You want to go slow and steady, which is what they're why, doing. Why two open births in the beginning? You don't. Can we do a one fiber and upsize? Yeah, I think that's what Dr. Sharma was what talking about. Maybe one seven five and then go to a two two five or two zero. Uh, but yeah, because human like was so good. That was the only reason. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah, we're done. Okay, done. Okay.
Now what wire in this? And we have the IVBT team. Yeah, we're gonna call the IVBT no, team. Here. So um, Ron Waxman is here. Uh, I'd love to get him at the yep. at the at the oh. mic, uh, Ron. IVBT, it's you know you are uh, using it in your center. Um, what do you think here? I mean, you wouldn't put in another layer. We don't have yeah, drug coated balloons. Why? Can we open Why? Dr. Dr. Um, Waxman's Ron um, Waxman. Ron Waxman's uh, microphone, please? Is it working? One, two, three. Yeah, yeah no. no. It does. Uh, no, we, we think that uh, one layer of ISR is enough. Brachytherapy is still going to save you another stand and probably will get you the best result. So I, I think that all those cases that you showed today, even the underexpended one, probably it's better to put the uh, brachytherapy instead of another stand. The mm -hmm. other comment that I had, if you have two layers of stent, this is going to be much more difficult to open an underexpanded stent. Yeah. But brachytherapy to me, for the yes, is the first So line. how many on this panel are using brachytherapy for these ISR cases until we get drug-coated balloons? Dr. O'Neill? Yes? And uh, you, are you impressed with your results or...? It's too early to tell. I mean, the problem was that we've done it for 30 years and the problem is two or three years you get late effects that you're not aware of, but at least in the first couple of years, it seems to work. Yeah. So Dr. Colombo doesn't need it because he has drug-coated balloons. We don't have brachytherapy in Europe. Yeah, no brachytherapy in Europe. not available. Yeah, Dr. Nicholson? I think uh, I would echo the sentiments that Dr. O'Neill said. I think it early on it looks good, but uh, worry about the late-term effects. Yeah. All right. Give me the few there so the problem, now right? here you are with the with the balloon, and you will be generous with the balloon, right? What size is this? Three five. One of the things we the trouble we have with this case is that we always lose that distal third. So if I balloon too fast, it's gonna go down, and he's. So I need to wire the distal third. Yeah, distal circuit. Remember what had happened? Patient yeah. had a few interventions before, and the distal circuit knocked out when you dilate the main vessel. So we have not done that yet. And now we are going to do wire into the distal circumflex. Yep. Yeah. We still open. Yeah, open, open, open. It's still <laughs> open, but so, it's uh, it's on a thread. Dragging by a thread. Uh, yeah. yeah. So strategy point of view, and I know that you need to uh, start your uh, uh, leg, the debate if you want to do. I mean, we had just shown another case, and only question is if the audience wants to see IVPP, yeah, yeah, I mean, how would they see it? Yeah. yeah. Let's just see how uh, that goes, and then. Yeah. Okay. A little test there? Yeah. It will be very angulated. We, we really don't want to lose too much Whatever time for lunch, lunch, you know, and, and, and the exhibits, yeah. Dr. Sharma. Uh, so so, so I think that you start your debate. Yeah, that I will think be the best way. Yeah. Before, start the debate before and we'll we go show to you lunch, the will you show us what you did? Yeah. And we'll put yeah. the Beautiful. on the side Perfect. where the... If you can put the fluoro on the side where the factoids are, then we're going to go to our yeah, debate. And we thank you all, uh, guys, for, for being here. And um, thank you.